Hey guys, Mr. Hugmeplux here, doing a walkthrough of the Mass Effect 3 Citadel DLC. So put your seatbelts on and get ready for the ride. Admiral, how are you holding up? Day by day, Commander. Yeah. Hackett sent me a message about this apartment. I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. <laughs> are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge. Clear your head. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. Wow, this place is just pimped out, guys. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Focused. If you say so. Thank you. And make yourself at home, dammit. It's yours now. I'm sure I can manage. Okay, good. Been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, Anderson. Be careful out there, Anderson. You too, Shepard. Yeah, take care. While I just live in luxury. Wow, this place has even got a big piano. Oh, what's this? You never asked me about this, but my wife just called. My ex-wife. Nobody likes to talk about the toll that long months apart can have on military relationships. She received a new message. She wasn't military. rising to meet our desires. We pay a price for that curiosity, that drive. Our relationships suffer. People we love suffer. But that's reality. And it's worth the cost. I must have thought it was. I guess I still do. In the end, you just have to hope you made the right choices. Alright, there are all these data pads around the apartment notes for Anderson biography so I guess this episode will just be reading these notes for Anderson biography Normandy the Normandy? a brand new ship my ship you don't forget that moment the first time you're standing there the whole crew looking to you for direction unforgettable I'd led men and women before that Seen a lot of combat already. Always managed to find my way home in one piece. To do that a few times, you begin to think you know better than the next guy. Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you're lucky, really lucky, you find yourself on a good ship, in front of a good crew. A crew you can trust with your life. Gifted. Disciplined. Brave. All of them. Eager to set sail into the endless black ocean. I still remember my exo asking what my orders were. Shepard, I said. Let's see what we can find. Oh, that brings back memories of Mass Effect 1. When at the start, Anderson was the commanding officer until I took over. Friends turned on me. I was outnumbered. 
things didn't look good. My plan to get out of there involved lots of punching. Well, that worked for a while. Then a table hit me. Or I fell down. When I came to, I saw a Solarian putting the rest of the troublemakers down. A Solarian? Move like a damn cat, I swear. When everybody was out cold. Or running. He walked over and helped me up. N7, he asked. Yes, sir, I replied. He looked over my collection of unconscious friends, nodding. Not bad, human, he said. Then he walked away. I had met my first specter. Learned an important lesson that day. No matter how good you think you are, there's always somebody quicker, faster, and a hell of a lot smarter than you just around the corner. That little lesson's kept me alive more than once since then. What's up here? Oh, awesome. Abstract artworks. Don't really know what they're meant to be. But I'm sure it's meant to be art. What's this? <clears throat> okay. So, Tombstone data. Admiral David Edward Anderson. Not sure why anybody would be interested, but thanks for asking. Um, I was born in London, June 8th, 2137. The last of three children born to Ursula and Paul Anderson. A nurse and a flight mechanic, respectively. <sighs> but that's a little dry. And someone's gonna spice this up, right? <sighs> Never been much for the spotlight. Anyway, where was I? It was a second marriage for my parents. They were almost 50 by the time they had me. My mother worked shifts, so my father would often take me to the base. While he worked, I watched transport ships and fighters take off. Worked his whole life around space travel, my father. But he never left Earth. Not for a day. He was a good man. But that's just a side note. Don't put that in. Who is it, Kaylee? Uh, yes, I need to take that. I hope this is what you're after. I'll get to the more interesting N7 stuff next time. Oh, nice. Can we dive in? No, we can't. A toilet. Nothing really interesting in there. me to talk about the SSV Normandy, the Normandy SR-1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. Acting CEO Eli Zander was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, his team of Torian engineers, 
were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Xander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the... IES, well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation, but it still ended with the Turian scientist in shackles and a human Turian fistfight at Korra's den later. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Normandy, she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to Xander. Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, one of the highlights of a long career. Alright, let's go back downstairs. Check out what else is in this pimpin apartment. More toilets. Ooh, punching bag. Huh! Can't even punch it. That sucks. Okay. I have your new questions here. As a leader, do I ever feel that the end justify the means? Spirit of law over word of law. I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole, but I think I know what you're after. You're referring to the way I, um, arranged to have the Normandy released to Commander Shepard before the Battle of the Citadel. I'm not sure how valuable hindsight is to the military. Obviously, it worked out for the best. Without the Normandy and Commander Shepard free to do what they needed to do, what we needed them to do, Saren might have taken the Citadel. I think it's clear what a different galaxy this would be if that had happened. I did what I had to. If I had been wrong, I would have gladly accepted the repercussions. The real trick is never being wrong. <laughs> If you're looking for more action and less philosophy in these notes, let me know. Sure, I can talk about Commander Shepard. Big topic. There's been a lot written about the Commander, but most of it isn't true. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story. But I know the man. Worked with him. Fought with him. Trust him with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? He's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. God only knows how he got out of some of that. Makes your head spin. Thing is... You never heard a complaint. Never once got, no sir, I can't do that. He never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes he forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over him getting back home. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. Soldiers like the Commander... ...are rare. Men like Shepard? Even more rare. Oh, how nice of you to say so, Anderson. What's this? Thought she was a Turian. Almost shot her. 
I got a few smiles. Then Hendrix turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of you, mama, that started this goddamn war in the first place. Scared the Torian shitless. <laughs> I a good laugh at that. Uh. The boys fought great that night. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. A few months ago, I had a chance to sit down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today the Admiral is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Uh, that has to be... Uh, so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then, you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry, is there a question in there? Uh, well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. None of which I'd like to share. But, uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean... Do you follow your heart over your mind? <sighs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit. Your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader, well, war tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader then? A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. Alright guys, a slow start to the first episode of the Citadel DLC. 
but stay tuned for more exciting episodes. Mr. Hug Me Plocks out, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.